Was I unmuted when I said that? Yes. Oh, well, I don't care. Hey, folks, it's Thursday night. Welcome to Murder Hobo Inc., uh, the Cacophony Edition. Uh, this is our group that uh, they're urbanites. They're uh, coffee trotters. The Jets. Oh, that's Just right. Call us the herbs. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so welcome aboard if this is your first time. Uh, glad to have you. If this is a second or more time. Thanks for coming back. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy cool things like this shirt, uh, the link is down there. If you want to join us in Discord and just shoot the shit about D&D, link's down there. Uh, most importantly, if you want a seat on the talk show or a one-shot this Saturday, uh, hit us up, mhobo Inc. either on Twitter or on Gmail. Uh, we'll get you in there. Two hours of fun. Half hour of green room shenanigans like... Uh, teaching our youngest murder hobo all about deliverance which she has never seen uh before we get into this shoe uh we'd like to thank pirate dog dice for making dice that kill players thank you big red and of course uh let us not forget oddfishgames.com who also has adventure sense make your game smell better especially if it stinks. Uh, don't forget this Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, they will be doing How to RPG with Your Cat. It is free, but you must register. Uh, the link is on our Twitter account. Uh, take a look at it. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Folks, let's introduce you to our cast tonight, as is our normal cast. Uh, we will start... David. <laughs> David, for you, who do you play? All right, I am David, and tonight I will be playing Zadar, the outed changeling in Cacophony. <laughs> wow. You'll have to watch the previous episode to find out how that went. <laughs> that is true. Uh, it did not. Uh, it could have gone worse. Yeah. I'll give you credit. It could have gone worse. Yeah. Right, next up is our youngest uh, member of the Murder Hobos who has not seen Deliverance. She's going... Uh, hiking in the Ozarks here in a few weeks. So if we've got any serial killers watching, <laughs> uh, oh her. no, Caitlin, who are you? Who are you playing tonight? I am playing Daphne, a tiefling paladin tonight, who seems to just have everyone in the town dislike her. But who knows? Maybe things will change now that we have a uh, rep in the office. We you know, better representation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is true. And last but certainly not least, our producer, normally behind the camera tonight, behind and in front of the camera. Carrie, who are you? Who are you playing? I'm Carrie, and I play Camille, a halfling necromancer, and that's about it. I'm married to that guy. Are Another you? Guy. <laughs> Him. <laughs> she made the mistake. Uh, folks, these guys are now fifth level. They're kind of a big deal here in Cacophony. Uh, last episode wrapped up a trial and execution of the assassin formerly known as Zoran Zubek, a.k.a. City Councilman Zoran Zubek. Uh, these guys have had a relatively peaceful time for the past couple weeks in Cacophony. Their former leader, Guildmaster Fomunda D's Nuts, was voted in thanks to a successful election campaign uh, by these three vote harvesters because it's very important to vote. Uh, with their Guildmaster elevated to his lofty position, <laughs> uh, his trusted uh, adjutant Fauntleroy has taken over the reins of the guild uh, with a week, or I'm sorry, with several weeks of downtime. You guys have recovered your hit points. There has been an honorarium of several hundred gold pieces uh, given back to you guys for your successful assistance. And, of course, they have the key to the city, meaning they're hot shit. Uh, <laughs> one morning, uh, there is a knock on the door, and a messenger has arrived with a missive saying that Fontleroy has a job for you guys. Uh, who wants to be a hero? Me, me, me. <clears throat> are we going straight to the guild, or are we going to the Flying J? You know the answer to that. Folks, the Flying <laughs> J, or the Flying Java, is the group's favorite coffee emporium. It is behind the government offices, which is going to take you out of your way, but you get there. Who wants to roll to see how big the crowd is? Roll what? D12. 
I'll do it. Uh, go for it. Thanks. Oh, four. <laughs> Long line. Long line. Uh, looking around, you notice that uh, two of your associates are not there. So sad you cannot see. Uh, Gib Gibble and Harris, uh, they have been freshly elevated as well. They are now inspectors uh, for the city of Cacophony, you have been told. You haven't seen them in four weeks as you've been taking a rather nice hiatus. Uh, you finally get up there. Everybody roll a d20. Let's see if they got your main ingredients in stock. Uh, 18. 11. 14. Everybody's above a 10, so you guys get your beverage of choice. You head back uh, on this glorious morning. A morning that cannot have anything go wrong. Oh, it's just it's like 9-11 on 2001. It's just bright and shiny until. Uh, you arrive at the guild house uh, and the door is jerked open. A dark elf with silver hair bars your path. Halt. Who goes there? Hello, I got the well, pen. Well, we got our we got our pins on. <laughs> Seeing your pins, uh, the drow steps to the side and allows you in. I wow. whack him in the knee as I pass by. It is a she. I whack her in the knee as I pass by. D twenty against me. Oh no. <laughs> the drow is 19. like basically my kind. Uh, you connect. Uh, she grimaces in pain and oh. allows. Enter. Sorry, hun. That stick, it, <coughs> I lose control of it sometimes before I've had my coffee. How may I help you, three? Uh, we're responding to the notice that we it was delivered to us today by Fauntleroy. I will see if uh, Mr. Fauntleroy can see you. She goes over to Fomunda's office, knocks quietly, is allowed admittance and comes out and waves you in. Uh, behind uh, Famunda's desk sits the individual known to you as Fauntleroy. Uh, he has got stacks of papers on his desk and has not exactly mastered the job at this time. Uh, you are shown in by the drow who shuts the door, crosses her arms, and stands next to the door. Fauntleroy welcomes you each in with a hearty handshake, asks you how you're doing, small chat, yada, 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 and then introduces you to Hortense, uh -huh. his new apprentice. She is the new Fauntleroy. Uh, she rubs her knee once <laughs> and nods to you. Uh, yeah, her. Yes, she's, uh, she's a little bit standoffish. Uh, Fauntleroy, okay, are you guys ready for this? This one came right down from Fomunda, so this is kind of important. Okay. Ready? Uh, we have royalty in town uh, from the neighboring country. Princess Vasta, Vastata, Vastata. It's, trust me, there, there's a reason. You wrote uh, that. <laughs> yes, it's Latin. Uh, has graced cacophony with a visit, but her security detail has fallen ill from some strange malady. Hmm. Uh, Councilman Deesnuts has asked that the guild fill in for the day and uh, take care of the princess and make sure she doesn't get into any trouble. Uh, there is also a rather substantial payday of 500 gold pieces each uh, for guarding uh, the royal. Uh, she is a young woman. Uh, that is all I really know, aside that she is staying at the bungalow. Uh, currently, a couple of old friends are looking after her. But Fomunda would like for you three to go ahead, be her security detail, make sure that she doesn't get into any trouble, and that uh, she is uninjured. Uh, also note that due to the treaty, she has diplomatic immunity oh, no. for anything shy of a homicide. Wow. How old so <laughs> this went well last time that we had to look after a delinquent. So. <laughs> How old is she? 
Well, she is 17. And Too young. What race is she? Uh, she is a human. Oh, fuck. Long blonde tresses, and I'm told quite striking, but I have not yet seen her. Have you ever talked to her? I guess they don't have phones there. <laughs> no, they the, the uh, telegraph system was down as well. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, the members of her security detail are sick. Uh, we don't know what the one of the local churches is looking after them. So you guys are to go uh, to the bungalow, not your place, but the bungalow in, uh, and show her around town, keep her out of trouble. Easy peasy, uh, her father is giving you guys 500 gold pieces to make her happy. So try not to piss her off. This is Any be questions? No. So where did you come across Hortense? Uh, Hortense has come from a different city. How'd you find her? Highly, I put a Craigslist ad out. Mm. Put a Craigslist? Yeah. <laughs> from Craig, right? <laughs> from Craig. Uh, Dibble <laughs> Fibbit actually was able to locate her for me. Uh, it cost me almost an arm and a leg not mine. <laughs> uh, but uh, Dibble has done a nice job. If I could remember his uh, saying, I would say it now, but uh, let's just say uh, she did not come cheap. Did she come willingly? I did come willingly. <laughs> the opportunity of a lifetime. Well, we have to ask with this group, you know. It's I understand. Okay. If you're in trouble, just wink twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Fontlewer is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we better go. Yeah, uh, I guess so. Uh, Hortense opens up the door and allows you to exit. This time, she kind of drops an arm to make sure that she can fend off any more attacks on her knee. Uh, <laughs> you guys go out. You are familiar with the bungalow. It is behind the government building uh, and near the uh, east, or I'm sorry, the western gate. Uh, all of these guys have uh, Sneed's Guide to Cacophony, but for those of you who don't, this is the area that they will be going to. This is the government building here. They are starting at the bungalow. Uh, this is called the Government District West. Uh, you guys weave your way through the crowd because you are quite experienced at moving through cacophony. And everybody seems to know you. As you pass by the Ottoman shop, <laughs> Otto stands outside with his broom. Hmm. Really? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, no hard feelings, apparently, with Otto. Uh, folks at home, the uh, last two episodes will flesh that one out for you. A uh, <laughs> short time later, you get to uh, the bungalow. And as you near it, uh, the quiet inn sounds... Or uh, As you near the quiet inn, sounds of smashing items and yelling can be heard from within. Okay. As you open the door, who wants to open it? It's now living up to its name. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to open the door? door saying that, all right? <laughs> there you go, da or Daphne. Uh, I need a DC 13 Dex. Uh oh. Oh no. From all of us, or just Daphne? Just her. Do I have to roll exactly that? Or do I get that? <clears throat> 13 or better? I get that on my modifier. Yeah. Dex modifier. Then at least it's a 13. <laughs> <laughs> Daphne the tiefling dodges a mug of milk, however. It strikes the door and douses all three of you with tiny droplets of goat's milk. Uh, a commanding voice begins to shout for calm to be restored. Everybody give me perception checks to see if you know who this is. Oh, no, wait. Lord. <laughs> oh, fuck. Five. Is, it is it Kevin Bacon? <laughs> 18. <laughs> Seven. Uh, Daphne and uh, Camilla do not recognize the voice, but Zadar, you recognize a very pissed off gibble being held back uh, somewhat forcefully by Harris. Uh, they are now the inspectors for the city watch. 
Uh, Gibble is screaming at a very young, very attractive woman in elegant clothes. Uh, she will be turning a shade of umber with her hands on her hips and screams out, No, you look. I am tired of being cooped up in this small, smelly building, and I wish to get out of this place. You may either take me yourselves or get out of my way right now. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Is it Veruca Salt? It is Veruca Salt <laughs> as Princess uh, Vastata. Mm. Nice. Okay. So, now remember, so, uh, uh, she is royalty and mm. she does have diplomatic immunity. Uh, Gibble and Harris see you and Gibble starts to calm down just a wee bit. Harris Thank God you guys are here. Uh, we feel bad for you, but she's your problem now. I'm going to go get some coffee. Whoa, 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 whoa. Grabs Gibble, and they go out the door. They're, they're already gone. <laughs> Meanwhile, the princess... Well, I am waiting. <laughs> what are you waiting for, princess? I was told I would have an escort around the city promptly. And this is not very promptly. I demand to be released from this stinking shithole. Uh, all three of you kind of look over and the matronly proprietor with the grayish black bun in her hair. Pretty fuming, huh? <laughs> begins to fume. Uh, <laughs> Okay. If you guys want to keep the peace, you got to get her highness out of here. Yes. Okay. Sadar, who are you today? Uh, I'm going to go with Gina Carano. <laughs> I think that sounds like a good plan. I think that's <laughs> okay. a good idea. So why don't you two walk her out the door and I will talk to the <clears throat> mistress of the hotel. Okay. And I'm like, your highness, I'll be right if you behind. would. We can we can stroll about the city Who as of now. <laughs> are you people? First of all, I am not just going to go with any ragtag individuals. I want to know who will be taking me around the city. What are your credentials? We hold up our pins. <laughs> we are actually working in a capacity for the city itself. So, <laughs> persuasion. <laughs> and we have the keys to the city. Well, I wasn't going to throw that in our face, but take care. You will by the end of the episode. I probably will. <laughs> okay, 19. Fine. At least you do not... At least you do not smell. We do like uh, to bathe every day. <laughs> lead on. <laughs> So I'm just like right this way, your highness, and she follows outside. Uh, the birds have stopped singing. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I wink. I wink at at, at Cammy, and I'm just like, uh, you know, I think we might need to make a stop at Hebo's first. <laughs> Maybe that'll help. <laughs> I uh, talk to the proprietess, and I hand her a few gold coins and apologize for the trouble. Persuasion. Since you give her gold coins, you can do it at advantage. Uh, oh. Uh, 20, not natural. Uh, you have assuaged her fear, her anger, and most of her emotion. Please do tell her highness to have a good day. Oh no, I won't tell her that. <laughs> I don't tell her things that I don't mean. You go outside and you notice that uh, the princess is hmm. I wish to go. That way. To the left. I see her like actually taking out like a coin or something and doing that. <laughs> she wants Literally. to go to the homeless shelter. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she wants to walk along the forested street here. The forested street. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, as where are you guys walking? 
Uh, I've got behind, so I assume these two are beside her. Uh, be beside her. Yeah, I think that's pretty safe. We're okay. we're next to her, so we'll we'll chasse, sashay on by. <laughs> she comes to a quick stop, looks to her left, looks to her right. Excuse me, are you royalty? Oh, we're supposed to be like behind me. <laughs> <laughs> you right. acquiesce. Yeah, so I was about to no. say, as you wish. <laughs> see her security detail. You can secure me from behind. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> okay. First sexual innuendo of the night. Uh, you guys step Check. back. She straightens out her silks, continues to go, looks to the left, looks to the right, looks over to stately Wayne Mansion. Eh, not bad for a hovel. Uh, continues to walk forward and she goes, what is this building? What are we looking at? The homeless shelter? Oh, homeless shelter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, princess, that is where people who don't have the means to support themselves live. Why don't they get a job? Some of them are too elderly or disabled to do that. I don't believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this seems like a waste of space. Would you throw a grandmother out on the street? My grandmother can work. Does she your, can also ride a horse. Does your grandmother work? My grandmother's dead. Thank you for ripping that scab off. <laughs> I appreciate it, commoner. Well, I guess she doesn't ride a horse anymore now, does she? Yeah, or works. Or maybe she dies. She, we strapped her to the horse. The horse is still going. Thank <laughs> you again for ripping it off. I wish, to, I wish to go in here right now. Into the homeless shelter. Entering the homeless shelter, Princess oh. Vesta, or Vast. Vastata, sorry, uh, will remark that the building isn't nearly as dirty as she expected, uh, and the fecal aroma is only slight. Uh, <laughs> you guys notice that there is <clears throat> no fecal smell at all. Right. Uh, the remark happens to catch the ear of a lady. Uh, everybody give me just d20 rolls. Let's see if you guys have actually been here before and know who this is. Uh, net 20. Uh... Daphne? All right, what am I rolling? I got distracted reading something. Straight up D20. <laughs> <laughs> um, 11. Uh, Daphne and Camille, you do not recognize this lady. Zadar, you've had a run in with Sister Mary Clarence before. She is the uh, gatekeeper, for lack of a better term, proprietor of the institution. She hears the bitching and moaning of the young royal and comes over. Uh, she introduces herself as the director of the establishment. Uh, and undeterred, her highness uh, demands a tour of the building post haste. Now, madam. <clears throat> this is taken poorly. <laughs> uh, the caretaker will point out that she is in the middle of something and it will be just a few moments for her highness because of course she's wearing the fucking tiara uh, <laughs> but she will be happy uh, to acquiesce and give a tour of the building so she stands there Who? waiting sister or the princess princess oh. uh, waiting um, Princess, do you have any questions about the... I believe the lady in charge is going to go ahead and give me a tour. Thank you very much. I appreciate your concern. I just thought we might... Yes, I am aware. Okay. All right. Oh, this is intolerable. And she begins to storm down the T section of the hallway. You see Mary Clarence, who is ass deep in business, mm -hmm. uh, trying to hustle it up. Uh, the impatient monarch moves quickly down a hallway and peeks into several rooms where the residents stay. I assume you guys are following her. Of course. Of course. I thought I was going to leave her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trust me, Daphne, I'm currently thinking about it. <laughs> there are several elderly folks, as you can imagine, in some of the rooms, but then she comes upon a room with two males in it. Uh, the two men look of questionable demeanor. 
uh, and questionable financial straits as they are rolling dice against each other. Uh, she looks at them and goes, Peasants, what are you doing? Why aren't you out looking for a job? The two men slowly turn and look up at her. And in my worst cockney a accent, uh, Oi, princess, uh, we don't got no jobs. We are busy. The princess then responds with information of employment opportunities in her own country. The two look at each other and look back at her. And one of them makes the remark, I've got a job for you, my dear. Oh. Uh, the princess picks up on this comment and her brow furrows and her eyebrows bend down. It is clear that the princess has been offended by the individual <laughs> and points out to him, you know, I think you need a few lashes for that smart mouth of yours. The two men stand up. <laughs> <laughs> They are quite large. So, yeah. How about we roll initiative and see where this one goes? Rolling initiative. <laughs> 16. <laughs> 14. Uh, 18. 11. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, T-Swing. Failing initiative. <laughs> Camille, you're up. Uh, the two men are grabbing at the hilts of blades and they don't look Whoa, we let blades happy. in the homeless shelter uh it was not immediately noticed it was hidden under some clothing oh, god damn it uh -uh. um gentlemen i would ask that you calm down and don't do any harm to this young girl <laughs> Look, short shit. Somebody's already obviously carved you down to size. So you're going to step away or you're first for the ass beating. <laughs> hmm. How many well, coins would it take for this to go away for you? The next comment out is exceptionally profane, sexually offensive, and probably impossible because you don't think the princess can produce gold from there right uh, uh, the answer is going to be you don't have enough okay well then i guess i will take my quarter staff and proceed to try to lambast his nether regions fair enough <laughs> go ahead 21 oh yeah that connects with the twins and uh, this is a... nineteen on his constitution roll. Crap. You got him, but he's mad. Five points of damage. Five points to number one. Uh, next up, uh oh, Jungo, the two hobos. Unless you are attacking us. Hey takes all kinds there don't be a don't be a hater <laughs> uh there are four of you uh so it's going to be camille daphne zadar princess uh camille the one you hit is definitely going to go after you the second one is going after number two daphne so on camille Ooh, 18 plus 4, 22. And Daphne is 17 plus 4, 21. Uh, they slash across your chest and start wheeling and dealing on you. Oh, for three hit points each. Uh, however, they get bonus die because they got friends. Uh, so take that three and make it 13 damage. Nice. Uh, Zadar, you're up. Okay. It's just like, well, guys, I think y'all need to simmer down. Perhaps take a little nap. 
and I'm going to cast Slave. Sure. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And the pool is... Dun, 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 21. <laughs> well, ooh. <laughs> Daphne, you're up. So the little sparkles came out of my fingers. It's just like... <laughs> The lesser one had 22 hit points. Jeez. <laughs> Wait, so he's dead? No, they're both no. alive. And they're <laughs> pissed. Yeah. Oh, all right. I guess I go to attack. Wait, there's how many are there? Two? Dose. Okay, I go to attack each one. I get two attacks. Sure, yeah. go ahead. All right. Number one has been hit by Camille. Number two mm -hmm. is the one on you. <clears throat> All right. So 24. Hit. Hit. Okay. And then. These guys will be. A nat 20 to 25 to hit. Nice. Yeah, these guys are easy to hit. Uh, Zadar, do you push the princess back? I do. Okay. Uh, so give me damage. Sure uh, I that'll assume... piss her off, too. <laughs> I, I'm assuming the nat 20 was on yours, correct? Yeah, so that one's 10 damage for the one on me, and then 7 damage on the other one. Nicely done. Top of the order, Camille. Behind you, you hear, how dare you? But you don't know if it's aimed at Zadar or the hooligans. <laughs> okay, so... Does a 18 hit them? 12 hits these okay. guys. Easy to hit. Easy. So I want to try casting Thunder Wave. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's like the whole place is going to no, like. And a cube originating from me, right? So in yes. front of me? Yep. Okay. So. Wow. And you have to make a constitution saving throw. Yep. Uh, yours fails with a six. Uh, what's the save? Uh, it just says failed save creature takes d8, 2d8 thunder damage. Yeah, but what's your save? Should be in the middle of your player sheet. Uh, I think it's a 14 now. I have no idea. And if it is, I don't make it. Uh, hang on, I will take. Oh a yes, look. you're right. It's fourteen. Uh, I fail, so two d eight to both of them. Okay. And the room. Then we have to roll for this, or no? No, uh, you guys are in a line. I'm assuming. Two eights. <laughs> uh, so, uh, one is blown through the window. Oh my god! So dramatic. Uh, the other is pinned underneath the bed as it overturns. Uh, on his turn, a four. He's stuck under the bed. Uh, a nice breeze is coming through <laughs> the hole in the wall now. Uh, and nice. behind you, Sister Mary Clarence demands to know what in the hell is going on. She is quickly chastised by the princess who says, do not swear in my presence, you foul woman. Uh, She's a sister. She didn't swear. Sister Mary Clarence <laughs> begins so to turn crimson and it is going past her eyeballs and she pulls forth a wooden stick with numbers. Oh. <laughs> Somebody I'm just like, hand. Uh, I'm just like, whoa, sister. Uh, yeah, well, well, uh, I know where this is going, and especially, you know, having been part of the church at one time. Uh, I she will... smacks you, with oh, the ruler. sister. Uh, no kink shaming. That's what she's into. Three hit points. Okay. Get out. No! <laughs> How far up are we? You're on the first floor. I jump out the window. <clears throat> that would be the fastest way out. Yeah. 
Okay, Zadar, would you escort our young charge out? <laughs> <laughs> I will. And yeah. I will <laughs> hand some coin off to the sister so they can make the repairs to the room. Tell her we'll make a donation. <laughs> so, uh, Princess... Zadar, give me a give me a grapple check oh, because God. all you see is her hand coming up, and the crimson in her face is also rising. Oh, okay, so. Uh... A grapple check is what it, uh, strength or dex? Strength or dex. Let's go dex. Okay. 23. <laughs> Natural one. Uh, you managed to <laughs> pop a hand over her mouth, grab her underneath her uh, voluptuous bosom, and carry her out uh, as she kicks your shins. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pay for this later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, Sister Mary Clarence follows you out to the point where the damage is done. Uh, how many uh, coins are you tossing there, Camille? I asked the sister how many she thinks would make this okay. Get out! Okay, I'll come see you next week. Bro, I'm really aggressive at her face. <laughs> Uh, you guys make it out to the street. Uh, Zadar is getting the shit kicked out of him, uh, but there's no damage. Uh, a small crowd of people have started to gather and arm. Bitch. Do you let her down, Zadar? Uh, <laughs> I tell her, Princess, I will let you go. <laughs> if you just let us handle the Cretans from now on. We are the only ones that actually understand you. <laughs> you had best handle them, and you best not handle me, or there will be repercussions. Oh, I expect they will be. <laughs> now, continue with the tour. Well, <laughs> Mistress, would you like, to, or Mistress, Princess, would you like to continue to go yes. in this direction? Of the night. That's right. Yes! Okay, so <laughs> we want to take her to the Church of Guest. Who wants to see if she dodges the chamber pot? Oh, oh. No. I'll let one of you roll for it. <laughs> I'll roll. All oh, right. Okay. 20. Uh, you grab her just as you see the sparkle of porcelain coming out. Uh, and jerk her away as it splashes onto your boots. Ah. She looks up, looks back, looks up, looks down. Uh, the sudden realization of what missed straightens herself up. You have done a good job. Consider that an accolade. Thank you, Princess. You're welcome. Continue. Uh, mm -hmm. She storms off, looks up, uh, reads the nameplate and goes, well, this is where my people are and barges right in. Uh, Zadar and Camille, do you remember this place? Which, which place is this again? Church of Guests? Yep. Uh, yes, this is the place where we bought the poltergeist. Correct. It is run by Archdeacon Henson, oh. <laughs> who does not like adventurers. Can I no, get some he does not. Digitation on my boots first. Uh, yes. I'll take care of it. <laughs> uh, for those of you just joining us in a previous episode, uh, these two and was it Carol? Uh, no, Caitlin. Oh, was it? Yeah, because she was playing Jenga with the caskets. That's right. Uh, <laughs> yes, these three had to remove a pesky poltergeist uh, from the Church of Guest. However, the faithful leader of the congregation does not like adventurers. He was an asshole. One, one person's opinion. Uh, you come to a stop, <laughs> and uh, as you weigh the pro-con about her going in, the royal opens the door and enters. Inside, approximately 10 people are laying in cots in the center of the sanctuary. They are all dressed in apparel that would be customary for the princess's oh, realm. Uh, Archdeacon Henson will approach, and the party members will recall that you are he is not fond of you guys, uh, in spite of you saving his church. 
a pair of acolytes in masks approach and offer each one of you masks for your safety and the safety of others. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> thank you. I'll take two. There yes. you go. We Remember, will take a mask. folks, wear your fucking masks. Yeah, see, it's like a, you know, this is all propaganda. I'm just a <laughs> propagandist. Um, uh, the princess refuses. Princess, I beg you for your protection. Please, please take the mask. I was not affected before. I must have a superior body. I do not need it now. How can we argue with that logic? <laughs> How long does it take to get sick from this? You do not know. You do not know what the disease is. Oh. Uh, good news is uh, Archdeacon is like, yeah, you might want to wear it. But uh, he is leaving that to you guys. So, present an argument for her to wear it to me, please. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, let's look at it this way, Princess. You wouldn't want any other germs. Not saying that you would get sick, but you wouldn't want any other foul contaminants to get on your skin, being as royal as you are. <laughs> Persuasion. Nice. 19. That is true, but I still don't think I need it. Well, Somebody else eyes. give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take two persuasions to convince her. Okay. Uh, well, Princess, I don't think these uh, poor folk uh, could... These are my people you're talking about. Oh, they are not I'm, poor. They are handsomely no, paid. No. And he, he well, didn't mean poor. He just no. meant the unfortunate. Though. Unfortunate and suffering. So, um, I mean, it's not really for your protection, princess. It's actually for theirs. I don't think, unlike you, I don't think they could tolerate uh, any kind of contaminant. Oh, Jesus, what did you just say? <laughs> Persuasion at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see. <laughs> okay, maybe not too bad. Okay, Persuasion? Mm -hmm. 19. At disadvantage? Oh, disadvantage, sorry. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. 16 plus 7. So it was... The disadvantage was the first time. It was 19 because 16 plus 7 is... Fine! I shall wear the mask. Does it only come in this color? Uh, unfortunately, Princess, yes. The things I do to make sure my people are good. You are the most benevolent. She uh, <laughs> dons it. Uh... Camille, she points at you. You, find me a mirror. I wish to see what I look like before I proceed. <laughs> now. Uh, yes, right away. Is there a fucking mirror in here? <laughs> uh, Archdeacon Henson uh, escorts you all the way up to the front uh, mm -hmm. and hands you a small square mirror. Uh, it might work. Okay. <laughs> you rush back. Give me a D12. Oh, God. Damn it. 19. Uh, 2. Okay. You got to do better. <laughs> Nine. Uh, two is my roll. Uh, higher. To the left. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm short. <laughs> My chambermaid were here. This would be easier. Fine, this will do. Let me see my people. If I may if I, I may, princess, it yeah. sets off your eyes. They're quite beautiful. You're really making this look work. Uh, Caitlin, since you haven't rolled it, roll persuasion for the two suck asses. For me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, twenty-one. You're correct, but then again, I make everything look better. 
Uh, <laughs> Simone! Uh, and she rushes forward to the stricken individuals. You notice that they seem to have a pox. How close would you like to get? I'd say about six feet away. Yeah, yeah, roughly. Six Maybe feet a little more. Well. <laughs> uh, there are, I believe... Uh, I believe there are 20 of them here. Uh, that was quite the detail. Yeah. Well, and there are porters and things of that nature. She's pretty mm. much on her own right now. Yeah. Uh, probably scared. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you guys want to do? She's going to be here about an hour. Fuck. Uh, uh. Well, try to convince her to stay at least six feet away. You won't, but you can <laughs> roll. If you get a nat 20, uh, she will step back. Oh, okay. This is going to happen. Fuck, 10. He burst into flames. <laughs> These are my people. I am safe with them. Uh, is there anything that we can do for you while we're here? Uh, Wine? Now? <laughs> for yourself or your people? For my people. Oh. Me first. Okay. Uh, Archdeacon Henson, uh, surprisingly, has a store of uh, sacramental wine available. <laughs> Who wants to roll to see if she likes it? Oh, okay. God. Oh, I'll roll. <laughs> Go ahead. Straight up con roll. Oh, con? Yep. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, for Her con, con, not yours. Yeah. Seven. Yes, she does not like I it. I didn't think she would. Uh, who gave her the wine? Z Zadar. <laughs> Zadar. Uh, daggers out the eyes as she struggles to keep it down. She then uh, gives some to Simone, uh, her close confidant, her aide de camp. Uh, Simone is pretty out of it, uh, so she doesn't notice much of anything. Uh where would you like to go next? Um, Princess, is there any other place in particular that you would like to I am visit? saddened now. I need fresh air. My people need their rest, and I do not wish to intercede on behalf of the illness that has creeped upon them. Take me away here, as my people are well cared for. Archdeacon, thank you very much. You are an inspiration to the faith. I'm sure that your flock appreciates their shepherd. Uh, the fat ass wow. <laughs> and uh, accepts it graciously. Uh, she offers coins, uh, but he refuses. <laughs> uh, she then walks outside uh, everybody give me an investigation check okay ooh 22 nice uh, mm, 12 <laughs> what 9 i'm real salty i rolled a 4 my investigation's a plus 5 so <laughs> i rolled wow. a 12 so suck it <laughs> uh camille you notice that uh, a slight tear rolls down her cheek as she exits uh she wipes it away quickly uh quickly regains her composure which way did we come from i point uh, that way yeah we move forward continue show me around where are we going now uh, I actually, well, Princess, I have something that will help us make that decision. And I pull out Sneed's Guide to Cacophony. Nice. And I open up to the, the index and point in several locations out. <laughs> so uh, uh, does anything sound interesting to you, Princess? I said forward. Okay, so we'll Fine. to the treasury next. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. The treasury is a very well-designed, uh, gleaming white limestone building. Uh, there are multiple guards in the small plaza in front of it, and there are two guards at the gate. Uh, this is where the wealth of the community is kept, as well as coinage is minted. Multiple guards are stationed here. A pair of armored men block the entrance to the building. 
making her highness a little bit upset. Uh, she demands to be allowed to enter immediately. Now, gentlemen, move aside. <laughs> the men do not move aside, and they look at you guys. Your Highness, may I take a moment to speak with them? As long as I get in there to look around, as is my heart's content. I just don't <laughs> want you to have to deal with that kind of person. Wise choice, although the one on the right does have some attributes that are pleasurable. Oh. <laughs> What's his charisma score? <laughs> Roll for attractiveness. 19. Oh. Oh, okay. Chiseled jaw, firm pecs. He's got it all going. So uh, I lean in and ask the guards if it would be possible to take the princess on a short tour. Uh, looks down, sees your pin. Milady, no one is allowed inside the mint except for the city council members. You will not be permitted to go in. What is going on? <laughs> what is the delay? We're just, we're, we're working out terms here. It'll be fine. <laughs> so is there anywhere that we can take her inside that's not the actual mint? No, there is not. Camille, you feel a hand push you to the side. The princess drops her sleeves a little bit. Enhancing horror. Oh, nice. Chest Her decolletage. Reach. Here we go. <laughs> and goes right up against the hot dude and begins to flirt with him heavy. Uh, she is using her physical beauty to ply her charms onto the young man. Uh, it says, uh, I wrote, role play of seduction is highly encouraged. Oh, hmm. I don't know what that means. Yeah, we uh, do know. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to bother with that, though. Uh, <laughs> the young man, however, is interested uh, hmm. and begins to flirt back. His associate next to him, an older, more experienced guard, warns him, and he receives the <laughs> uh, right on his lips. Uh, she then continues her seduction running her fingers up and down the arms and making the ooh, look, uh, <laughs> causing him to slightly swoon. Uh, and he starts to move to one side. Uh, she gets a smug look on her face, but the older guard steps in the middle of the door and says, not gonna happen. Uh, the younger man starts to push him and says, she's fine. The two are now in a shoving match. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> what would you like to do? <clears throat> well. I she like appears Camille. quite happy at this turn of events. Uh, of course she does. Uh, of course she does. Um... <clears throat> well, Camille. <laughs> Tiefling, do something. <laughs> uh, the princess is quite proud of herself. Yeah, she is. Yeah. So... Uh... <clears throat> uh, I'm just like, gentlemen, what if we get clearance from the council themselves? They can't hear you. They are really they're <laughs> like two brothers wrestling now. Okay. Their, their pole arms have fallen onto the cobblestone. Uh, give me a perception check, everybody. Okay. Uh, uh, 13. Uh, 18. Daphne and Zadar, you notice that the other guards in the region uh, are moving closer. Oh. Oh no! Oh no! They've been like fight, fight. <laughs> so I try to uh, intercede in the shuffle, and gentlemen, gentlemen, is this any way to act in front of a lady? Ladies, 
<laughs> well, I, I was that that was uh, <laughs> I'm talking Zidar's in, persuasion's never going to get above a four to four tonight, now. Boys and girls. No, no, no. I'm talking about social status. So give me a persuasion check, Zidar. Okay. That is going to be awful, probably. <laughs> Plus seven. Wow. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to punch you in the face. Okay. Nat 20, baby. <laughs> uh, take D4 plus two. So take six damage as you are knocked on your ass uh, from your position. Uh, Daphne, Camille, and Zadar, give me perception. Oh, my God. Oh. Wow. 11. Uh, 19. As uh, the blood dribbles down your upper lip, Zidar, you notice that the princess is taking this opportunity of confusion to get in and around behind the two guards and has her hand on the doorknob. A moment later, a rough hand grabs her by the back of the neck and yanks her backwards with a hee! Uh, a <laughs> large, older, bearded guard lifts her off her feet as she begins to scream. The two guards, the one that hits you and the good looking one, boom, stand at attention. Uh, this dude's a commander and he is not happy. Uh, the princess begins to string off just a solid core of national pro, uh, profanities mm -hmm. until she is shaken roughly, causing her tiara to tilt to one side. The guard commander, with a booming voice as deep as the ocean, what in the holy hell is going on here? Answer me now, Henderson. Uh, the young guard begins to stammer and stutter uh, and explains that uh, he, uh, he was distracted by, by big uh, breasts. Big breasts. <laughs> uh, and uh, his cohort that punched Zadar just looks up at the sky. Uh, the commander gives the princess yet another shake. Like flipping her tiara back to the <laughs> other side and cold cocks the young guard. Uh, 16 plus 7, 23. Uh, let's see how much he does. He is very strong. He does eight hit points of damage and knocks him against the door. The He turns to the other guard, the older guard. He says, speak. Uh, he rattles off that you four just wandered up demanding entry. He followed orders and protocol, said no, not going to happen. Da -da 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 -da. He flips the princess around, who is a ghastly shade of gray, having never been manhandled before. Uh, and she, for the first time tonight, is a little bit scared. Uh, <laughs> she turns to you three and says, help. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to deal with Bartholomew? Uh, I'll Captain give it a... Bartholomew. You got to lecture her the whole time. Right, right. Uh, I'm just, I'll, I'll step up and give it a shot. <laughs> I was just like, um, Captain, uh, the, this guard here, and I'm like shooting daggers at the one that that hit me. Uh, did an outstanding job executing his orders, but fortunately, uh, what you hold in your hand right there could become an international incident. This is Princess Vestata. She wanted to tour up the place, and your guard you know, stood his ground, you know, you know, performed honorably, and I kind of shoot him another look, but uh, 
the princess wasn't having it. She really wanted to tour this place and tried to come in. We weren't trying to force our way in, but this woman is uh, a force of quite, nature. Uh, yeah, quite a force of personality. So she is not used to our customs here in this city. Princess. He's asking. Yeah, uh, asking. Yes, princess. So I assume diplomatic immunity is in effect. Yeah. You assume correctly. Well, isn't that special? He drops her. My apologies, your highness. We do not allow foreigners into this building. Her rage returns. Oh. Would somebody like to get her calm before she blows up? <laughs> I would kind of like to see her blow up, actually. This is Katie Kaboom, isn't it? So <laughs> I, I lean over and I whisper, how dare he put his hands on you? I'm instigating it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she looks at him again. D12 against me, uh, Camille. five one uh just glaring at him rubs her neck Ew. and sits just stands there not saying anything <laughs> why are you hurt uh pointing to me yeah you're the only one bleeding Oh, I tried to intercede. <laughs> so, how did that work for you? You do know that the treasury guards are our finest. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> he uh, he laid hands on the princess, so I and I tried. As to did I. <laughs> <laughs> did you yeah. need me to punch you in the face? No, Captain. You do not. Are you certain? I am positive. <laughs> he reaches over grabs your nose and gives it a quick yank and straightens it out <laughs> and, I'm like, oh. Oh. and it's just like oh actually thank you captain <laughs> your highness you are not allowed in this building run along little lamb or things will get worse from here fuming she lowers her head in agreement Spins around and continues forward. Excellent. Uh, yeah. I tip my cane at the the guard or the commander, and I say, "Thank you." I kind of step to attention a little bit. Thank you, commander. And it's just like we'll take move, it from move here. Move along. <laughs> uh, she comes to the edge where uh, the back of the government building is, and. Uh, is going to decide which direction she's going. <laughs> I wish to go down the alley. Of course. Of course you would, Your Highness, but I don't I do not recommend I that. wish to go down the alley now. Uh, Your Highness people tend to throw their chamber pots in the alley you caught the last one you will catch this one but i'm saying is the ground might not let us go move on and she kind of straightens her neckline you notice that there's a little bit of redness back here <laughs> where he cuffed her <clears throat> she heads down the alley passes by several barred windows uh there is graffiti here <laughs> of which is not kind uh, one of them is uh, Zoran Zubek on all fours, <laughs> uh, receiving some kind of treatment uh, from what appears to be a minotaur. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's also one that uh, says, fuck the guards. Uh, <laughs> and you move down uh, to the side entrance of Heldo's Chapel. Um, she stops to pause to look at the structure uh, and uh, ponders it for a second. Highness, what can we do for you? I am thinking. I am aware of this religion. 
The doors open at this time and several parishioners come out because it is morning or afternoon vespers are done. She reads out Heldo's Chapel and broadly, broadly announces that these people are no better than snake worshippers and this religion is certainly not allowed in her country. This causes offense to the parishioners coming out. Oh, man. Uh, Highness, would you like to move on then? Yes, because the stop? ignorance of these people okay, is offensive yes, to me. Let's, let's let us move as on. As far as we can. As quickly <laughs> as we can. The parishioners are not happy, but they are normal people. They are not yeah. rogues or anything like that. Uh, you can hear muttering. She is not making a good impression. Uh, anybody want to try and smooth the edges or just say fuck these snake worshipping ignorant bastards yeah, fuck these the snake worshipers <laughs> <laughs> no I it's kinda, only gonna I get worse <laughs> yeah I kind of mouth sorry and <laughs> just kind of walk on by. Uh, the next is Smiling Joe's Tin Shop um, Smiling Joe's Tin Shop's at this location and has several baubles in the window mm -hmm. uh, Vistada takes an interest in the shop's inventory and just fucking walks right in uh, <laughs> joe the owner warmly greets you and the princess and extends her hand to be kissed joe looks at you three and i go yeah yeah we mouth like please, 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 please. your highness what may this humble servant <laughs> do for you right uh she asks for a description of how these items are made uh she seems to be genu genuinely curious about it uh she moves freely about the shop pointing at different things and asking about them smiling joe true to his name uh smiling and, and explains to her the process of molding the tin items into the shapes that are useful or beneficial for household items etc uh few moments of looking through stuff she finds a small tin hummingbird and she inquires about it he gives a rousing description uh and she will ask about another item behind him uh it is a large hen is what it appears to be everybody perception oh god i see where this is going <laughs> maybe maybe not <laughs> Oh, man, with a 15, would I see it? <laughs> nope. Uh, you said perception? Yep. 18. Kate, or Daphne? 18. Uh, Daphne and uh, Camille. Yep. She pockets it uh, while his back is turned. Seriously? Seriously? You pay for it? How much is it? <laughs> <laughs> She's not paying for shit. Uh, okay. Uh, Joe finishes his explanation and a customer comes in. Uh, he moves to speak with the customer who is waiting on an order. Camille and Daphne, Zadar does not know what's going on. What would you two like to do? So, like, why are you a What? Where... What is I that? beg your pardon, you <laughs> horned beast. What did you call me? <laughs> I am the royal heir to the throne. I am not some clebomaniac. <laughs> uh, your highness, may I have a word? You're gonna take it out. I suppose. I saw you, you with your friends. You obviously care for them a great deal, and you obviously care for the people of your country, and you want to see the best for them, yes? Of course. They are my people. They love me. Of course. Of course they do. And this man was very kind to you and showed you around his shop without any hesitation whatsoever, but he has to work for his living, and you just stole food off of his table, basically. I did not steal anything. What did you put in your pocket? Nothing. May I see your pocket? Uh, you will not touch me. I will not let you leave without paying for that item. Uh, persuasion. <laughs> uh, persuasion. 
19. <laughs> His circumstances are... It clearly fell into my pocket. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Could I buy it for you? Persuasion. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> One. No, I do not need you to buy it for me. I am perfectly capable of doing this myself. I understand, Thank you. but it would be a gift. Mr. Joe, Mr. Smiles, Mr. Smiling Joe, I <laughs> wish to purchase this item. Uh, he commented <laughs> how beautiful it is. And uh, for any member of the royal family, he would he would be honored to give her a, uh, and he's looking at you guys, <laughs> discount of, Half. Ten percent? Yes, that would that would work. Uh, no, no, I will pay full price. My family pays its debts. She's we are a Lannister. Lannister. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, oh my God, Cersei will, will, will <laughs> gladly pay. This is Cersei is a seventeen-year-old. <laughs> You're lucky, Jamie's sick. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, oh my God. <laughs> uh, she produces a few gems. Uh, he, uh, I cannot. Uh, you guys yeah, give me I, a perception I, check. I, I kind of stop him there. It's just like, it would be an insult not to take this, Joe. So what am I rolling? Perception? Perception. Okay. Uh, 18. Daphne? Mm -hmm. It would help if I actually roll, wouldn't it? 13. 16. Uh, Daphne and Zadar, you noticed that the, <laughs> those, those are expensive gems. Yeah. Perhaps you can uh, tell her that the exchange rate isn't like that here, and that we'd be happy to purchase it for her. And then they could work it out later. <laughs> My apologies, I continually forget that I am in an economically distressed region. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, my guardian here will go ahead and pay for it. However, I will make sure that she is compensated fairly. Hey, it's like five gold pieces. Can I get the hummingbird thing too? That is what she wants. I thought the rooster fell in. No, the rooster was uh, what it she was... distracted and oh, was. Okay. I was okay. about to say, that was the That big cock. Yes. Uh, what's the big cock on the thing? <laughs> okay, well, I want to buy the big cock then. Okay. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's 12 gold pieces. That's fine. Uh, you now are carrying something the size of a ham underneath <laughs> your <laughs> arm. Uh, nice. Happy with her purchase. She walks out, looks to the right. Looks to the left. This way. Uh, she comes back <laughs> in the building. Uh, you guys stop in front of the structure, and you notice that it was a residence, and it is currently for sale. The exterior could use a little bit of work, uh, but the structural details on the sides are very interesting and add to the charm of the building. Hmm. Moments later, an attractive man exits with a woman. He kisses her hand. She blushes and points out that she will be back with the paperwork in just a few minutes. Uh, he spies Vestata and saunters over to your group. Milady, oh, such boy. beauty. Uh, she extends her hand and he proceeds to give it a long slurpy kiss. <laughs> she brings a slight blush to her face. Uh, the individual presents himself Hi, Sir Safakant, a foreign knight. I have just made arrangements to purchase this expensive property. Um, do you like it, my beloved lady? Uh, she, of course, is smitten with this older gentleman uh, because this is a stupid fantasy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he promotes himself Everybody's as the humble servant. Issues. That's right. He presents mm -hmm. himself as a humble servant that has recently arrived in this hovel known as Cacophony uh, to find a summer home. Uh, mm -hmm. The royal is just sucked in immediately. Uh, he looks up at it. You know, 
the one thing that would make this structure prettier is you. Uh, she <laughs> buys, bites on it, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, he goes, are you her servants, I take it? We're her guardians right now. Guardian angels? My dear, someone as lovely as you does not need guardians. No one would harm a hair on your head. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> she's a fucking idiot kid. Uh, and she buys it. You know, my lovely dear, I could show you around the house if your servants were not around. Perhaps you should order them away. Uh, I am fine. You three are relieved of your duty. Uh, Go on. Go on. Mm, no. I will take insight from everybody. I was about to say, not going to happen, princess. <laughs> oh my god, nine. Not insightful. <laughs> Fifteen. Uh, Sixteen. Uh, only Camille is keying up that I don't think this guy's a knight. <laughs> uh, Zadar, you're getting a weird feeling. Daphne... You're wondering, you know, it could use a coat of paint. <laughs> I would like to ask a question. Oh, Sir Knight. Oh, my God. What do you want, servant? So, you're buying this property, correct? I am. And so that means you have to have official documents, yes? I do. So, where is your patents of nobility? Uh... We would like the real estate agency or real estate agent in the yellow surcoat that just walked away has that. I don't think so. Nobody would let that go. Nobody. Are you calling me a liar? Yes. <laughs> he undoes his leather gauntlet and bam, right across the face. Oh, okay. man. Let's go odd or. 10. If it's higher than 10, it's going to give you a mark. Jeez. That 20. Oh Holy crap. God. It looks like this across your <laughs> face, as apparently he has lead in the knuckles. Uh, you suffer two hit points of damage and have to shake it off. I challenge you and you alone to a duel. So... Definitely not a knight. The real estate yeah. agent was <laughs> coming back, me. right? So why don't we just wait here? Dave! The gauntlet has been thrown! I say we wait here until the real estate agent comes I back. I am not going to wait for anything. You have impugned my honor. I demand <laughs> satisfaction. Fine. <laughs> the song starts playing. Are we doing this here? We are doing this here. On guard! Initiative. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was going to intercede, but we go to initiative. Oh, All right. Seven. Eighteen. Daphne? Fifteen. Uh, I got a six. So, Zadar, you're up. Uh, give me perception check. And it is 23. Uh, this fucker's packing serious steel, and he's wearing good armor underneath his cloak. He might not be a knight, but but strong. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try a little intimidation check. So, sure. well, I'm going to glamour and shift into a wicked visage of him. And just pull the scimitar out and just kind of level it at his throat. Sure. Go ahead with your intimidation roll. Okay. Please roll well. Okay. 23. Caitlin, or I'm sorry, Daphne, you're up next. All right. To attack, right? 
whatever you want to do, he's challenged uh, mm. your partner to uh, a duel. Oh, but we're not actually fighting him yet. Um, well, Zadar has pointed his sword right at his throat. I guess I'll try to intimidate him to just walk out of this room. Like, sure. Right. He's on the stoop. This is 227. <laughs> <laughs> Jump off? Oh, he did not. <laughs> I was about to say, is Jackie, is Jackie going to come Jack K is here. Jack <laughs> is the real estate agent. <laughs> You gotta be old to get that reference because Caitlin <laughs> right over. <laughs> oh yeah. That's probably older than she is. What's your intimidation roll? Terrible twelve. Okay. Is that the only thing you're gonna do? Wait, can I try I don't know. Um uh, I don't know. Does he have his weapon out? Uh he has his hand on the, the hilt. Can I try to take his weapon away? You can try, but it's going to require a really high roll. Yeah. <laughs> a sleight of hand, right? Yeah, you, I'll, go, I'll let you go sleight of hand. Oh, God, it's terrible. It's not going to happen. It's a four. You grab his wrist daintily. Uh, that brings <laughs> us to Camille. Uh, Zadar is pointing his sword at his throat. Daphne is massaging his wrist for whatever <laughs> reason. What would you like to do? Uh, She's checking his pulse. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh... How about I do invisibility? Fair enough. Uh, blink! Uh, you go invisible. Is that all I can do on this action? Yep. Okay. Well, it appears your associate has opted to flee rather than nobly fight me. You know what? I don't like your blade in my throat. He's <laughs> going to attack. And he gets three attacks oh, God. <laughs> uh, since you have disappeared it's odd Daphne even Zadar with Zadar getting at least one okay I re I perform a reaction and cast shield okay uh, he's coming after you all three attacks okay so all right you know what he's gonna use his sword on two of the attacks and shove Daphne into you using her as an improvised weapon. <laughs> uh, I'll go with the blade attacks first. Okay. 16 and 14 add 7, 21 and 23 on the blades. Uh, he will shove Daphne. Daphne, strength versus strength on me, please. You can add your modifier. Yep. Only the 23 strikes me. That's it. Okay. 14 plus. My string? Or, yep. That's Eight... one not natural. Uh, 18. He shoves you, but doesn't push you very far. Uh, Zadar, he is going to do 2d8 plus 6. <laughs> this fucker is tough. And he rolls like shit. <laughs> uh, nine damage to you as he slashes through. Uh, the princess, uh, the light bulb has gone off, and she steps out of this mess. Top of the order, Zedar. Okay. And on that note, uh, <laughs> Zedar is... Uh, I'm going to try to control this fucker. So... <laughs> So I'm going to cast Tasha's hideous laughter upon okay. him. Wisdom? Yes, 15. He gets a plus. Uh, does not matter because that's a nat one. All right. So this fucker's prone. <laughs> he is laughing. Uh, the princess kind of cocks her head to one side. <laughs> uh, Daphne, you're up. I guess we're all attacking him. Wait, is he by the window thing still? No, he's on the stoop. Isn't that like a balcony? It's a step. No, 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 it's a step. It's Steps like a step going up into the, the residence. It's like a brownstone. 
Uh, uh huh. It is. Uh huh. It is a brownstone. Uh huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's like, I could. Can I push him down? He's on the ground laughing. Oh, he's already on the ground. Mm-hmm. Tasha's hideous laughter was completely functional. Does anyone have rope? Oh, we all got rope. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll tie him up. Okay, just as long as you don't cause any damage, it should work. <laughs> yeah. Give me a dexterity check. Oh, no, not, not, not super. Kick him in the teeth. Kick him in the teeth. <laughs> what? 18. That's good for half. Give me another one. Uh... <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Ah, uh, she gives him a bloody nose, but he is partially tied up, so his movement is restricted. Camille, uh, Daphne was trying to get him lassoed, uh, but was only half successful. You're up. Okay, so I blink back and try to tie him up the rest of the way. <laughs> uh, grapple me. Uh, strength versus strength or dex versus dex. Your choice. Uh, oh, well. Pretty sure Dex is going to be your better modifier. Um, I don't think... Oh, yeah, it will be. Yeah, because your strength is minus one. Uh, 17. Uh, you got him tied. Because that's a three. This is bullshit. This is the big bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get him tied up. Uh, we disarm him. <laughs> it is a long sword. It feels exceptionally light. I think we loot the body. Well, not body. He's well, he's alive. not dead. <laughs> Everybody, D20. I'll take the two highest rolls. Just straight up D20. 15. 11. <laughs> Five. Uh, you always roll better than me. <laughs> uh, Daphne, do you want loot or information? Information is the loot of the mind. So I'll there take you that one. <laughs> uh, you find his papers. Ooh. He is not Sir Sophocant. He is Reginald Von Claude. <laughs> <laughs> And he is a commoner. Mm. Uh, that means Camille finds the 50 gold piece gem. Uh, he is kicking and screaming, trying to get out of the rope. When Jack K arrives with the stack of papers. Oh, my. Oh, Jack like K, your highness, uh, my compatriot here has got his papers and it clearly shows that he's a commoner. I don't know if he can afford he's this. He's not going to be able to afford this. <laughs> and Highness, I'm just glad we were able to find this out before he could sell you. Uh, give me a persuasion check. <laughs> 20. Uh, uh, Jack A goes, Ooh, girl, you serious? <laughs> Tierra on uh, the princess and goes, Girl, I can get you a good deal on this. Who wants to roll against me for Jack K's persuasiveness? Um, okay, I'll roll. We're just rolling 20s? Yep. You are rolling for the princess. I am rolling for Jack K. 15. Uh, also 15. Ooh. We roll. All right. Seven. 19. Uh, the princess is not convinced, and Jack K has lost her sail. Oh, no. Uh, Sir Sophocant, a.k.a. Reginald Von Claude, is cursing your name, screaming bloody murder. <laughs> uh, Daphne, D12 against me. Oh, no. One. I have not rolled for shit tonight. Three. Wow. Thanks. 
Uh, two individuals well known to you two are coming down the alley after hearing the screaming. <laughs> Gibble and Harris have arrived almost done with their coffees. Uh, and they are curious as to what they are witnessing. Uh, Harris looks at Daphne and goes, we bit of trouble with her highness? Not at all. Oh, <laughs> the fine trouble. <laughs> Who's this guy? Trouble. <laughs> we found it. He was masquerading as a knight. He was a charlatan. Mm -hmm. Ooh, investigators! Are you interested in this property? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they point out that they cannot afford it. Uh, they ask the guy who he is, and he says, eat shit. Uh, you know what? Who do you guys like better, Gibble or Harris? I'm not uh, really sure. <laughs> uh, Gibble is Dibble's relation, right? No, oh, Harris. He's always got the coffee. Uh... uh Harris walks over and goes, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that, and puts his boot on the man's fingers, and you hear a loud crunch. <laughs> uh, despite him being a diminutive gnome, uh, he is quite dense. Uh, Reginald howls in pain, while Gibble blows a whistle, and several guards come running. And Camille goes, <laughs> We can take it from here if you want to escort the princess out of the darkened alley. And they look over at the back of the government building, and there is a caricature of both of them feeding each other coffee in the <laughs> nude. Oh, my. Oh, my. Actually, that's quite amazing. <laughs> this does not look anything like me. Oh, what well. What part did they not get right? Well... Clearly, that. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a button from a jacket. <laughs> uh, you guys may continue. The princess is a little bit shaken up at this point in time. Uh, you guys round the corner to Crack's Pots, and she looks in... Uh, the business is a potter's shop that make mm -hmm. a variety of goods. Brightly painted containers line the outside, and Vestata seems to have taken an interest in one of them. Uh, she will enter the store and peruse the variety of products that the owner, Crack, has for sale, but tells you three to wait outside while she conducts business. Mm. I shout in there, keep an eye on her! Mm -mm. <laughs> No. I will be fine. No. One of us is going with you. Hmm. Doesn't have to be all of us, but it has to be one of us. Yeah. Six. Him, then. Who's him? We're all girls. Yeah. Oh, did she? Oh, well, no, no. I have not shifted out of that that dude's uh, appearance. Oh, that's right. Okay. You're still a dude. Yeah. Uh, him. Okay. Uh, Zadar, you go in. Uh, oh, Lord. <laughs> the owner comes out of the back room covered in wet clay and extends his hand. Vestata rebuffs it and the asks about how much the item outside is. Uh, he gives what you consider a reasonable price for it, mm -hmm. but she throws out an alternate price, which is, in parlance, lowballing it severely <laughs> crack takes offense at the offer and makes a counter offer to attempt the sale zadar you and i will d12 off okay you're the princess okay 11 eight she does not like that price oh no <laughs> reroll okay Four. Five. Closer. So she, she acquiesced? Not yet. Give me another. Okay. Five. Four. <laughs> you guys <laughs> seem to be caught in the middle of two prices. Would you like to give her any insight? Uh, what is the object? 
Do it I is a this? large vase. A large vase. Are we talking like person size vase? Like uh, Camille size. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. <laughs> You're the short one. Uh, There's a reason for this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I I talked to the proprietor. And it's just like, uh, can can we work? Try this again on the price. I mean, we're at an impasse, but she really wants it. So, what can you do? He will split the difference between the two of the price that you guys are stuck on. Okay. And if she shakes my hand. Oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I. I press the digitate his hand. <laughs> nice. Persuasion at advantage. <laughs> oh, let's see. Persuasion at advantage. Okay. All right. Ooh. Okay. Uh, 16. The price is met. She looks at you and goes, we're taking it back to the bungalow. Pick it up. Do you want to know what my role was before that, the advantage? Now sure. Now one, one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> nice. Uh, she orders you to go ahead and pick up the item. Uh, okay. I, I oblige. I, I pick it up. Uh, Camille, you have the metal rooster. Mm -hmm. Zadar... You have the Camille-sized urn, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, and you are slowed and oh. cannot see. Uh, she lambasts you and says, not one crack in that item. Uh, and well. she begins to head down <laughs> to uh, a vacant building because the hostel's tenement uh, is kind of in the alleyway. Uh, uh, let's see what's here. Uh, the vacant building appears to have been a shop that is now for sale. Vistada peers into the dirty window and examines the old furnishings as uh, Camille, holding her cock, <laughs> uh, looks over and sees an individual dressed in a forest green robe with silver sigils adorning the front, the wrists, and the neck. These sigils are quite familiar to you guys. No, oh, no. <laughs> Everybody roll initiative. Uh, I'm going to have to drop my cock. <laughs> drop your drop your cocks and grab your socks. Seven. Uh, let's see. I've rolled in a nineteen. Seven, twelve, nineteen, and a three. Siddhar, you don't know what's coming because uh, you're holding a fucking urn. Urn, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Daphne, you hear Camille? Oh, Jesus. Turn around and see an individual wearing forest green robe with silver sigils adorning it. The sigils are the same as the individual that <laughs> Eunice Monk Slayer went into combat with, although the robe is a different color. Uh, the individual is striding directly towards you in a determined fashion. What would you like to do? Move? You. Oh, can I move out? Of the Wait, coming towards me, guys. Move out of the way. Sure. All right. Uh, that brings us to Camille and her cock. <laughs> oh, I, I should be like, go. oh, watch out, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one I had to put a little bit of thought into. <laughs> I'm not carrying anything. I'm distracted looking up two T's. Nice. This one lights up. 
<laughs> okay. Okay, Camille, uh, the individual is striding determinedly towards you. Well, towards the three of you. Stop. What do you want? Are you Marty McFly? <laughs> <laughs> Marty! <laughs> Are you Mortimer J. Sneed? <laughs> uh, the individual walks right up to you. Bows sharply and announces that he is Brother Harrius and wants to know if you are who you are. Camille, Daphne, and the changeling Zadar. What's the no? Yes. Uh, yes apparently, we are. Brother Harrius wants to know. Uh, he reports that he is from the Order of Pick, persons interested in knowledge. Uh, the monastery in the mountainous regions north of cacophony in the hiplock peninsula huh. in many circles they are known for their assassins the art the order of the arm uh assuming that you do not attack brother harrius which you have not uh he produces a document to four daphne right. holds a scroll out to you Take the scroll. Okay. I read it. Uh, he produces, you read the scroll and the document it is a signed contract for your lives that was sworn out by Zoran Zubek. Fucker. Uh, you will be able to, uh, when you look at him, he goes, Mr. Zubek is deceased at this time. Ergo, uh, the order to assassinate you has been rescinded this is notification in the event that any of my associates would happen upon you so like we can just show that from you know somebody tries to arrow us to death. <laughs> pretty much yeah awesome. yes okay. uh he he points out that he is not from the assassins order uh but he believes since you so <clears throat> expertly took down several members of our order he does not believe that there are more coming okay well we thank the brother yes no. uh let's see i don't think i gave you any treasure because i considered giving you uh the money that he spent no they are going to hang on to the thousand gold pieces uh -huh. oh okay uh, because you did not fight him, uh, there is not going to be any retribution from the order. Oh, God. That so you thousand you gold pieces. successfully <laughs> dodged that one. Uh, time is growing short. We're going to go one of two encounters. Okay. I didn't want to drop my cock. I couldn't fight. That's right. Uh, anybody holding a cock that big is... Not to be messed with. <laughs> uh, the next building you come to is the Institute, as it is commonly known. It is the school in Cacophony for those of youth and those of middle age and those of the elderly who can come for free and learn things. Mm, the nice. youth are required to attend school to learn the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, because nice. there's no A there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The large three-story building has a beautiful water feature in the middle of the small plaza next to the road. Three stone books have water drizzling over them in a circular pool with a variety of inspirational quotes about learning carved into the stones. Ooh, the building uh. is the school for commoners to learn the basics. Uh, as you approach the building, a bell rings twice and several doors offering egress open up and people spill out into the courtyard. Your charge is puzzled and begins to walk towards a group. The group she heads to... Mm. Oh, it's going to be the mean girls, huh? Our kids. <laughs> uh, this is uh, standard, you know, 10s, 12s. Uh, there is no standard attire. This is not a Catholic school. Uh, <laughs> no the, Catholic school uniforms? Nope. Uh, the kids, everybody uh, moves off into their different age groups. And she approaches the young group and will speak with them about the usefulness of going to school. 
it will quickly become obvious to you that the royal was pub or privately tutored. Uh, any of the groups that she speaks with will expound on the virtues of having many people offering different ideas and experiences to overall learning. The opinion will greatly offend her and she will become a blustering fool and start to become insulting to the youth. What would you like to do? Hmm. I would like to say, Highness, what 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 it's upsetting you there is no reason for a collective to have educational purposes what these children have told me is foolishness you do not listen to other ideas everyone follows the same idea and that is how order is maintained a young girl <laughs> steps forward with a scowl on her face and pigtails and she goes you don't know very much, do you? <laughs> <laughs> the princess is now offended, leans over, and begins to chastise the child. Two adults dressed in brown robes are headed your way. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. How would you guys like to handle this? I say we let this play out. <laughs> yeah, let's see what happens. The two get into a viperous argument with the 10-year-old ripping in to the 17-year-old princess and begins to hurl a variety of juvenile-esque insults <laughs> as the nice. crowd encircles the pair. The quick tongue of the princess cuts just as deeply as the 10 year old who wants to roll against me to see who cries first oh <laughs> do you want to do that camille or do you want no, you seemed excited you go ahead okay all right ready are we rolling d12s or d12s okay if i win the kid cries if you win the princess cries okay eight son of a bitch ten the last insult about the pigtails making her look fat causes the small child to howl in anger and begin to tear up. Uh, winning the argument, the princess receives a round of accolades from the people watching the argument. Uh, oh, no. She would be a plastic in another life uh, <laughs> smugly she turns around and looks at you guys and notices that you guys are not happy with it who wants to d12 about that I will okay six eleven I suppose this is my fault what highness what is your fault the child crying. I, I would say yes. You argued with her and obviously she cried. She together. argued with me first. You <laughs> argued together. And so she... I'm the bad guy? Mm, I wouldn't say bad guy. I would say you're the bad female. I wish to go back to my room. Highness, may I say one thing? Go ahead. I don't think I can stop you. <laughs> uh, being of the family that you come from and the royalty that you come from, I would think it would behoove you to take the higher road. But my room is down the road. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not to stoop to another's level. Persuasion check. <laughs> Ooh, 18. Lady of the cock. <laughs> I accept your terms. Mm, I good. will endeavor to be a better person. Now take me home. I am hungry and tired, and the vapors are catching me. I imagine they are. 
Lady of the Cock. Lady of the Cock. Awesome. <laughs> You return her to uh, the bungalow. Uh, who wants to D12? Uh, Daphne, it's your turn to D12 against me. Let's see if she treats the innkeeper any better. Five. Four. Yeah. She treats the innkeeper with respect, goes inside and tells Zadar, you can leave the urn right there. Very well, your highness. You must be exhausted. Cut carrying it, that urn. It is dinner time and you guys missed lunch, but you have successfully guarded her as Gibble and Harris arrive to take the night shift. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Did you at least bring us coffee? They did indeed. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> okay. And a pear. Oh. A pear? Yeah, a pair. That's, that's what was available. Okay. Yeah, I love you I'll guys. Uh, this ends... Wait. Diplom- yes? I would like to present my cock to the highness in remembrance of our time together. <laughs> Never forget. Thank you for the lessons learned today. I will graciously accept your cock into my hands. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And she takes the rigid metal <laughs> into her hands and clasps it against her bosom. <laughs> your steel cock is against her bosom. That's and all that I can ends. Ask for, Highness. <laughs> That ends diplomatic immunity. Uh, we didn't get to all of the encounters, but we got to most of them. Uh, uh, David, what'd you think? I enjoyed it. I, I liked the life little lesson that we had to tell and teach this little Missy today. So it was actually pretty cool. That was the goal. Uh, yeah. Caitlin, what'd you think? Where are her parents? <laughs> uh, the... Khalif is not due till tomorrow. Oh, okay. Does she have uh, a mom? Yes, she has a mom. She has three moms. No, oh, uh, God. The, uh, <laughs> the thing that you guys missed was if you would have spoken with her attendants, they would have ratted her out and said, all you have to do is tell her that you are going to tell her dad. Tell her dad. Oh, nice. Damn God damn it. We didn't even think of that. Yeah, it's, let's see here. Uh, if the party speaks with a staff member, they will be told that Princess Vistada is hard to deal with, but they have the ear of the Caliph, and she knows it. This could be a point of leverage with her. Uh, there is no negative encounter here. So. Uh, oh, okay. You got Man, that. When she stole the stuff in the store, I was going to be like, should I just be like, yo, I'm going to tell your dad. But I was like, maybe they don't exist. Maybe our parents died. Well, you guys never asked. We so. never asked, yeah. <laughs> I know that was Grandma was dead, strapped to a horse. That's right. Uh, Carrie, what'd you think? It was super cute. I enjoyed it. Yeah. it's Folks at home, especially you young DMs, uh, urban adventures at fifth level are kind of hard, but I've got this one and I got two more for them. So uh, we will see how they do. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to buy our stuff. Uh, books, notebooks, shower curtain. Uh, masks. Uh, okay, everything. Masks. Wear your masks. Uh, it's down there. If you want to just bullshit on Discord with us, uh, we've got the Discord channel. And uh, don't forget, if you want a seat on the talk show on Tuesdays or the one shots uh, this Saturday, uh, mhobo inc at either Twitter or Gmail, let us know. Uh, new players get in first all the time. So, you know, if you're bored Saturday night, college football sucks. Uh, yeah, take a seat. We have Charles college Wilson. football going on with COVID? Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you in a closet for God's Where sake? Where do you live at? Ah. <laughs> us are like shut down. Everyone's working vir- or in school virtually. Well, to be fair, it's only the shitty conferences like the SEC. <laughs> yes. Oh. Uh, Big Ten starts in uh, two weeks, I think. <laughs> you know, real football with the Pac-10. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but folks, uh, a few life lessons here. Uh, wear your mask. 
Okay, mm -hmm. it's not violating your fucking constitutional rights. Uh, and you know what? Just be generally nicer to people. It, hey, it, if you're pro-life, you should be wearing a mask. Thank you. I don't like yes, people, so I'm anti-life. <laughs> uh, folks, that's it for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc. We're going to go ahead and give you the wave. But again, mhobo Inc. at Twitter or Gmail if you want that seat. Later, folks. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, the silver cock. Bye.